Welcome. You know, have you or your aging loved ones mentioned, oh, you know, I, I would like to age in place uh, with the pandemic, with uh, the nursing home staffing shortages, things like that. I mean, you know, when I was growing up, it used to be a, a normal thing for people to go to a nursing home. Not so much anymore. People are wanting to age in place. You know, our baby boomers by the year 2030, every baby boomer is going to be 65 years of age or older. And so today we're going to talk about that. When people say, you know, aging in place, what does that mean to age in place and what kind of preparation needs to happen in order for that to be successful? So welcome. My name is Pam. I'm one of your nurse advocates from your nurse advocate consulting. And this is Tuesday Tips. So we are live in our private Facebook uh, forum where we discuss everything uh, senior care. And we are also uh, live on our Facebook page for Your Nurse Advocate Consulting. So welcome to you uh, if you're joining us live. And I'm going to go ahead and we're going to get started. So we started briefly talking about why aging in place is becoming a, a trend. And, you know, our growing elderly population, you know, we've got a lot of advancements. One of the good things that was really born out of the uh, pandemic was the fact of, of telehealth. Now, I know our, our seniors are not the best equipped to uh, manage those um, the technology, but I mean, they've gotten it down so much where they have Bluetooth stethoscopes that actually a, a physician can listen to heart and lung sounds. I mean, it's gotten so sophisticated now in that short period of time from the pandemic. And this is also allowing people to be able to age in home, age in place or age at home that, that normally had to go to uh, the doctor's office. And now, you know, we have physicians, Dr. Dr. James Williams, we, he did one of our senior summit videos. He is, that was, that's what his practice is, is he has a virtual, um, he has a telehealth practice and he goes to assisted livings. He goes to other places where our aging adults may not uh, be able to have, um, be able to, to have the mobility to get out to the doctor's office. They're now seeing the doctors coming to them or it's coming as a virtual visit. And Dr. Williams goes on just to explain that, that really all that's necessary is, is like a smartphone. So, you know, if there's a family member at home with their smartphone or when he goes to an assisted living and one of the staff members is there, you know, with a smartphone, that's all that's needed for a telehealth visit. And uh, so it doesn't need a big computer system anymore. So those, a, a lot of the, the advances in medicine and technology has made it easier for people to be age to age in place. Now we are going to have a, a great webinar. Uh, it's going to be next Wednesday at seven o'clock uh, Central Time, and we are going to unpack in depth the three top trends, and that is um, mental health. Uh, born out of the pandemic, uh, specifically depression and anxiety. We're going to talk about loneliness and isolation, what the difference are. So we're going to unpack that a little bit. We're also going to talk about aging in place a little bit more. And finally, we're going to be talking about multi-generational living. We're going to have a real estate agent and a, a woman uh, that has been living multi-generational multi living most of her life. And she's just getting ready now to sell her home and enter into a no, another multi-generational uh, family uh, living situation. She's, she's going to answer some questions about what that is all about. So, But tonight we just wanted to kind of uh, give you a little taste of what we're going to talk about with aging um, in place. So let's talk about some of the, the pros and cons. So some of the, the pros, obviously, uh, there's the comfort of, of living in a familiar environment. Uh, many, you know, uh, we may, many of us like say, oh, this is my forever home. And we use that, that term kind of loosely, uh, but it may increase the patient's safety uh, being in an environment that they're been in for a long time when it's, they're having to, you know, use the restroom in the middle of the night. Uh, it's also their favorite place to be. And there's an opportunity for them to uh, maintain their independence. And, and, and that is, you know, the pandemic has kind of jaded a lot of people from going to nursing homes because uh, of being isolated away from their family members. And again, with the staffing, the, the critical staff shortages that we have in these facilities, when, you know, between now and 2030, it's going to create really kind of that, that storm of, of where people are going to go. So 
having helping people age in place, um, that may be the next, you know, best thing that we can do. Now, in my area, where I live amongst a lot of Amish, and they age in they age in place. They don't use nursing homes. They don't use any kind of facilities. You know, they they have they build multi generational homes, and some of the Asian population as well as the Hispanic population that is they have multiple generations that living in a home. So uh, maintaining independence is one of the big reasons why people want to age in place. Now, another pro is the potential for uh, continuity. Uh, they can be part of the community. They have neighbors that they know. So they've built up a little bit of a support system that can maybe help them with errands or can help them stay independent by, by having those neighbors that live close by. Uh, personalized care. I mean, there is non-medical home care. There is assistance that could come in to help them age in place, uh, meal prep, meals on wheels, uh, running errands, these type of things. Uh, but what I, what I say is, is a lot of these things, it makes it possible to age in place. But some of the things is that you have to consider is that there needs to be a lot of planning that's in place because depending on your health condition, depending on your situation, where's your support system? Where's your circle at? Where do your kids live? You know, there's, this is a great place. Aging in place is a wonderful thing. I hope that I can age in place, but we need to stress that there's a lot of planning that goes on to this. And we highly encourage people to meet with a patient advocate if you are wanting to age in place so that we can sort out all of the things that need to be uncovered and, and put in place. And some of the cons we're going to go. So um, there's a potential for isolation and loneliness. So as we age and become less mobile, there's um, a risk for people to be just isolated in their homes. And that creates not only um, the anxiety and depression created by isolation, but isolation not by choice, but because they, they're not mobile. And then the loneliness, especially if they live alone. So the financial burden of you know home modifications you know, if you have any kind of chronic condition and you need to maybe do some modifications for your home, that's going to impact your your um, aging in place. Safety concerns, um, care costs by maybe to have in-home caregivers coming in. And then as time goes by, you know, the ability to make sure that your daily needs are, are met as well as possible errands and things like that. So uh, those are some of the considerations. You know, um, can it be done? Yeah. I mean, a, a great example is, is I had one of our clients uh, had dementia, had Alzheimer's disease. And the husband says, whatever it takes, she's staying home with me. She's not leaving this house. She's not going anywhere, but, they, but here with me. And you know, the, the, the difficulty in that was, is as her Alzheimer's advanced, she had behavioral issues. She was ingesting liquids and things that she wasn't going to. She was a flight risk. She was escaping. She was trying to get out of windows and, and doors. So we had to go to great lengths to make that house safe for her. And we ended up as time went on having 24 hour uh, round the clock caregivers seven days a week. Uh, we had uh, private caregivers as well as agency caregivers to try and have people in there that were experienced in dementia care because that is, that's a whole nother ball game. And then we, we brought in, we built a care team uh, of family members, the community, uh, church, so we put that together for them and so that there were some respite and some things there. So there's a lot of things that go into place when you're looking at um, wanting to age in place. So, you know, aging in place isn't merely just a trend. You know, it's a decision that, you know, really redefines the concept of senior living. And, you know, if if you would like personalized assistance, that's one of the things that we could do to help you with this plan. But I just encourage everyone. So please hop on, join us for our webinar. You're going to have um, a nice workbook that's going to have some fill in the blanks, things for you to be able to take the things that are shared and maybe make notes and see how they're uh, pertinent to your family and what you may look be looking forward. And maybe to start some conversation with your aging loved ones, you know, and, and learning more about these, these trends, you know, maybe having those conversations, maybe getting a head start on what they want their golden years to, to be like. So we will see you back here next Tuesday for another Tuesday Tips. And we're going to chat a little bit about multi-generational multi living. And that's going to bring us right up into our webinar uh, Wednesday evening. So I've again, I've got in the chat, I've got the link for, for you to be able to re register. And that is free. So we'll hope we'll, we'll see you next Wednesday. But otherwise, we'll see you back here next Tuesday for another episode of Tuesday Tips. Take care.